Hey family, and welcome to the Abrew Experience, sponsored by Drop Ons Media Studios. Hey, if you need a share to listen to on your way to work, at work, legal work, hang with friends, family, or co-workers, hey, this is the show for you. Catch us live Monday through Friday at 1 p.m. Hey, we have a live chat room where you can interact with me during the show. We have breaking artists, breaking news, and we try to keep the show clean. So it don't matter if you're age 1 or 100, you can listen to the show. See you soon. Hey, what's going on, family? It's your man, Abru here. Glad to be back in the saddle. But I tell you what, we have some exciting news today. We have an up-and-coming podcast, man, called 30 in 30 Plus Single with Cold, man. It's going to be exciting. This is a uh, interlude to that. This is a, a, a pre-show. So y'all tune in and... In about a week or so, we're going to give y'all all the social medias. I want y'all to go follow this podcaster, man, because she's great. She got a great story, personality, man, and uh, it's going to be a dynamic podcast. So let's give her a warm welcome, man, and uh, just want to thank y'all so much. Hey, welcome, Cole. How are you? I'm good. You good. That's all right. I'm that's really right. hoarse. I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm that's all right. Hoarse. That's all right. The, the, the podcaster ain't going to mind, man. They just want to know your show. They want they want to know your story. What so this thirty uh, plus single podcast with Cole man? What is, what it consist of? What, give them a look inside of what they they going to um, be looking forward to. So the whole idea for the show was just to be real about what it's like being thirty plus and single. I think that we have gotten it in our heads that we don't need people, men, women, everybody. Mm-hmm. We feel like. I'm independent. I can do it by myself. And I want to get down to the nitty gritty. Let's talk about our wins, talk about our losses, talk about everything from being single now at 30 to the people who weren't single and are now single again. Okay. What's it like? I I can see that. I can understand that. I think it's going to be, like I said earlier, it's going to be a very exciting show. So, but... You had a little story today. You want oh. to share that story today with the, with the podcasters? You want to share it with, with your future fans because my fans are going to become your fans. I can see that. Oh, man. Okay, so I was moving a patio set on the back of my brother's truck, and mm-hmm. the table flew off the back. And I'm like, if I had a man, this would not be a problem. If I was not single, this would not be a problem. And now here I am in the middle of the highway Uh stopping and trying to get this table out of the middle of the road by Uh myself. So I pull my truck over and this lady, she stops, she helps me. And, you know, I make a few phone calls and I end up at AutoZone. I get there. The guy at AutoZone's like, oh, I don't think we have any bungee cords. Uh And I'm like, okay. Somehow this guy, his name's Abraham. We'll call him that. Um, Abraham, it's a good day. <laughs> he hears me, and he comes back, and he's like, here you go. This is what you need. I buy it. We get outside, and he stops me again. He says, well, do you need help? And I said, yes, I'm in a dress. It's hotter than sin. I, absolutely. I need help. I need help. So he helps me, and he's happy to help. And this is what it made me realize. We, ladies, we have got the game twisted. Mm-hmm. There is no tit-for-tat barter system when it comes to men. There was nothing that I could have given that man Mm -hmm. that would have made him happier than just helping me. Wow. That's all it took. Yeah. And most men want to help. I'm going to tell you, I I had um, this woman on my TikTok feed, and she said that men don't approach her anymore. And one guy said that, it's because we're tired of rejection. Mm. We're tired of being made fun of when we walk up on you. And uh, just like women don't want rejection, neither do men. Right. So I, I, I think a lot of men is afraid of of women. And not afraid as since they don't like women. They're just afraid of the rejection. things. Do you think this could be a part where a lot of men is... Pulling back from women, not willing to help. Now, Abraham is a different. Abraham has Sarah, so. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I feel like there's just a level of vulnerability that we refuse to have. Um, and until we really address that issue, mm-hmm. we're going to keep seeing the same thing repeated. So if I had not gone in there 
truly being like, help me. Mm -hmm. I'm a damsel in distress. Please help me. Yeah. He wouldn't have helped. He would have kept moving. If I had walked in there, like, I just need bungee cords. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. I mean, would you stop? Would you help me? I I would, but at the same time, I like you said, you went there as a dance dude in distress, so it's, it kind of would have threw off in my masculinity and said, hey, she need help, so let me help her. If you'd have went there in, in, in like a um, a person that don't need no help, hey, I just need this, and, and shake your head, and I probably wouldn't have. You'd have kept it pushing. Yeah, I'd have kept it pushing, so I wouldn't have it, it kind of embarrassed myself if I was trying to help, so. So going back to third person single, and I heard you say that we might have got it um, got it wrong. Which where do you see we might have gotten it wrong? Is it is it started in the two thousands? Do you think it started in the nineties? Do you think it started even earlier than that? From your perspective, I know you're still a young young <laughs> young female. Hey guys, guys, all you single males out here, click on the thirty plus and single with Cole man. She's a petite ex cheerleader <laughs> coach. Hey man, I'm telling you, she got a great personality, man. She gonna be funny. Her show gonna be a blast. So make sure y'all tune in when she launch it. Uh, first of Ju- first part of July. We don't have a, a permanent date, but it's coming. So going back to what I said, do you think that it started before that? Go yeah, ahead. I blame y'all. Y'all freak me, kids. <laughs> the ninety nine two thousands. You know, mm-hmm. y'all were jumping on cars and doing crazy things, and then all of a sudden. The media starts praising mm-hmm. Miss Independent. I love her because she had her own I N D E P E N D E N T. All of these things are happening, and now you are looked at as a commodity yeah. if you're independent. Yeah. To the audience, this is Felicia with Can We Talk, y'all? Hey, 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 so I'm gonna chime in here. So yes, of course, we saw at the early '90s bring us waiting to excel. Mm -hmm. Uh, We saw a movement and it kind of picked up even by the time Beyonce hit the scene, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and other artists as well. And so I think the independent uh, storm definitely occurred within our generation. But I, 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 hey, it's like. I'm not exactly uh, taking all the full responsibility. (laughs) I think some of this started even back into the 60s. And and Amy and you have talked about, uh, you know, the 60s and the impact of, uh, you know, the women's rights and things of that. And we can raise our kids ourselves. And Mm -hmm. there's a government system in place that will help us lean on welfare. Yes. And, And in you know, instead of uh, leaning on our black man, so I think that there's a lot of factors that led us to this point. Yeah, and mm-hmm. community too, right? Like, if you look at the black community in comparison with other communities like the Asian American community yes. or mm-hmm. the Hispanic community, or even yes, our you know white counterparts, they help each other. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, that, yes, that takes you back to being. 30 plus and single, like, yeah. A said it earlier, yeah. we wouldn't be 30 plus and single if, if me, mom, and papa were helping us out. Mm-hmm. Yes. There, I mean, the other uh, nationalities, they will get in the same household. There'll be multi, multi-generational, like grandma lives with us and mm-hmm. she's on the first floor and, mm-hmm. you know, mom and dad are on the second floor and maybe, you know, the next generation is in the basement, mm-hmm. but they pull their resources in a way that we don't. And that is true. That yeah. is true. Mm-hmm. Let me ask y'all ladies something. Um, and we talked about this before. I think we talked about it on the, on the Can We Talk show one time. Um, and now that we have uh, 30 plus a single with Cole in there, do you think, well, I'm, I'm going to say, I only heard my Ebony sisters say I'm an independent woman. I don't hear strong independent women. I don't hear other nationalities say, I don't hear Asian women say I'm, I'm a strong independent Asian woman or a white woman say I'm a strong independent white woman. I only say hear my sisters say this. So could could that be the problem? I, and we just being real. These are podcasts we, we're being real here. Yeah. I mean, my friends mm-hmm. that are newly 30 mm-hmm. to about 40, They've been married for the last 
10 years, mm-hmm. some of them. Mm-hmm. And, you know, happily married. Okay. Is it perfect? No. And they will, they're the first to admit marriage is not exactly what they thought it would be, but it's still what they needed. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's what they need in order to be who they want to be in the life, in the role that they've taken on um, in their life right now. So, yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it's, mm-hmm. it's us. And there are, now there are some, some of my friends who are not married sure. and they took a, a different route and that is what it is. Like some of them went and they traveled for four or five years instead of going to college or, mm-hmm. you know, they, mm-hmm. they went the unconventional route, but by and large, that's still something that's very important to them. And I've never seen them without a man. Okay. Without some type of boyfriend or person that can help them. I can see that. In a way, they're like bred to just rely on that relationship, you know, whether it's a boyfriend, but you kind of rely on it and you, you know, you go through high school and if you go to college and you go through college with that same person. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I don't necessarily think that we are raised the same way. You know, it's kind of just like, oh, get out there, see what you want, so your royal loads and mm-hmm. all that good stuff for for the for the for our men. Um, and then to the females, it's just kind of like, you know, get out there, do your thing. And I think we do it as a coping me- mechanism. It's always been my thing that I've said, and many people have heard me say that on Can We Talk shows. Is I feel like it's a coping mechanism. Like I'll just deep dive into my career. Mm-hmm. Um, as a distraction because you see it's not really happening in the way that it does to our other counterparts, you know. So you try to occupy your mind with something else um, and get busy, mm-hmm. to stay busy, um, yeah. so that you don't have to focus on it. You know, I'm just going to be successful. I can see that. I, I can definitely see that. But I yeah. definitely had that mindset. I still do. I, I told somebody yesterday, mm-hmm. matter of fact, I said, this is what I'm not going to be. I'm either going to be the rich auntie uh-huh. that's single uh-huh. or the married auntie. That's rich. I, that's also rich. <laughs> <laughs> but I refuse to be the broke single auntie. It's not happening. Right. I got you. It's not happening. So as it stands, I'm not dating. I don't have anybody. Mm-hmm. You know, I have my family and I'm so grateful for them. And I have some friends that I've met along the way and I'm grateful for them. Because I wouldn't be able to do it without some type of community. Mm -hmm. But my number one goal right now, which clearly I need to change, is my career. Okay. Because as it stands, based on the cards that are in my hand, all all I've got is to be the rich auntie. So let's let's just get rich. Okay. Okay, auntie, let's go. And I I need to speak to the fellas because most men know what they want. (laughs) They should know what they want at 30. Um, if, if you look even in biblical times, the Messiah, that's when he came into his his ministry at 30. You know what I mean? And, and, and I can speak for myself as a man much older than 30 now. 30 is when I knew exactly who I was and what I needed in a spouse to help me grow. Because um, it was time to get away from what I wanted and get what I needed. A lot of people still chasing, a lot of young young men, I'm talking to the young fellas, is still chasing what they want instead of what they need to, to build something special. Now, in my case, yes, I got what I needed and I was very attracted to my wife, but uh, I knew exactly, I knew myself, but you have to know yourself in order to know what you need. And, and I think a lot of these guys don't, we, we caught up with the television and the social media and a lot of these cats uh, don't know themselves well enough to know exactly what they need or be able to lead because when you take on a wife, you become the head of that household, but you have to lead that woman. That woman is not going to follow you if you if you ain't following something. You know what I mean? Most, most men, we, we, you know, we think, oh, I'm married, so I'm the head of the house. Yeah, but who are you following? You you ain't following the most high. So while I'm finna follow you, you mm-hmm. you taking us down to the pit of hell. You know what I mean? You, <laughs> you spending all our money, you playing PlayStation 5 all night, and you ain't working. But you know what? Mm-hmm. Cole yeah. told us something before we started the show. And yes. she was talking about some students that she works with. And it seems like the students have it. 
a, a better idea than even the older people call? Can you kind of just yeah, like give us a briefing about that? I was working in my studio one day and I came down off a ladder and mm-hmm. one of the students was like, um, took it out of my hand when I was hanging up and said, You're, women don't do that. Oh, right. And I said, huh? He said, I know you're capable of doing it. I know you can do anything you want to, but you're not going to do it in front of me. Oh, wow. And I said, oh. And he looked at me dead in my face, and he said, anything you need to get done, you come tell me. You don't have to ask me. You tell me, mm-hmm. and we'll get it done. So how does a student know that? <laughs> <laughs> and the people her age don't, you know, what's the disconnect? Or is is it maybe something that we got to a place, w- women and mothers he, and fathers? He was, he was white. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I mean, yeah, we're brought up and with I mean, different thoughts. Mm-hmm. I'm sure. Yeah, and it was it's rural town, so you know. I got mm-hmm. you. Uh, so, handy, handy kid mm-hmm. on his own, mm-hmm. like the auto mechanic shop type things, Agnew, all gotcha. of that. Mm-hmm. Um, but he still knew. Mm-hmm. Okay. And there were enough kids that didn't do what he did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That also still knew. Because as soon as he said said that, the rest of them got up. Yeah, mm-hmm. they did. Well, I mean that poses a question, and I'm a black mother, and I, you know, fortunately, I have a. I'm married to a, so you know, he mm-hmm. a, a large portion of my son's upbringing. Um, he had a father mm-hmm. in the household. He had his biological father, but he had um, a husband as well. So he had two fathers, and that was a blessing for him. But there was a period of time when I was raising him alone, mm-hmm. and it was making me question, like, okay, how was I raising him? Was I raising him to take out the trash? Was I raising him to, hey, I just went grocery shopping, you take the, the, the groceries upstairs? I don't know. I, I tell you what, I, I heard this guy say on um, online, he said a woman can't raise a boy to be a man. He's right. Mm-hmm. Only thing a woman can raise a boy to be is a good woman. It's mm. <laughs> well, not good. But no, and, the reason, and, and I had to kind of agree with him on that. Mm-hmm. She can put morals in him, yeah. but she's not a man herself, so how can she raise him to be a man? Now, that's the point. That's, that's where the downfall come where if daddy is not there, where are my uncles? Yeah. yeah. Where are my big cousins? Somebody got to step in and not let these young men go by the wayside because mama can, mama do well. Don't get it twisted. Mama mm-hmm. can mama can give you great morals, mm-hmm. but at the same time, she can't raise you to be a man. But like a dad can't raise his daughter to be a woman because he's not a woman. So mm-hmm. I kind of see what this podcast. This is on a podcast. I kind of see what he was saying on that. So, but we we but our main focus was, was cold here. You know, thirty <laughs> yeah. plus and single. Yeah. You know what I mean? We getting some deep topics, but thirty plus and single. So, as you date, is I heard somebody say the dating pool is a lot of piss in it. Pissy. Mm-hmm. The water is pissy. Honey, <laughs> 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 bring some chlorine tablets with you. It's is bad. It, is it that? Is it? It's bad. Uh, let me ask you, is it the younger guys or the supposed to be the more mature guys as the ones who act in the fool? I... Or a combination. Could be a combination. It's a combination. Okay. I think that we, my generation specifically, we grew up without internet mm-hmm. and we got to start the internet as mm-hmm. well. Okay. So, you know... Facebook, Twitter, all of those things, my generation got to be the test dummies on, and we still are. Like, we believe, for whatever reason, what's Mm -hmm. being put on there. So in our heads, not mine, Mm -hmm. I refuse to continue to associate myself with these things because I've got to do something different. But we have, by and large, bought into the idea that I'm 25, I can wait. Okay. There's plenty of fish in the sea. Look, look on TikTok, look on Bumble, look on Hinge, look on Facebook dating. There are options. And I love this is my favorite quote from the men that I meet. Well, there's more women on this face of this planet than there are men, so I'll have somebody. 
They, they are, they're, they're more women. It, it is. They're, they're more women by several, several things, several factors of, of war that's killing men in prison and stuff like that. That's how. But, mm -hmm. but I, uh, I, I think there's somebody for everybody. There you is. know what I mean? And, it's, and, um, and we're supposed to be fruitful and multiplying. You know what I mean? And so I, I do think a lot of men are playing the field. Right. But women are too. This women, is the women are too. Yeah. Women, and I, I think I just got done telling you that, Felicia. Like I was raised to be a man, mm -hmm. not like gender wise. Yeah. But when things broke in the house, me and my mother, mm -hmm. we fixed it. Okay. So in my head, my first instinct is for me to fix it. I got mm -hmm. you. I don't. It took me having a fifteen-year-old put me in my place. Okay. And tell me no. That's not what's going down in here. So it it's almost like we're in competition with the men at all times. And mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to date somebody that I feel like I'm in competition with. So I can't mm -hmm. even say, oh, it's the men. It's, it's not all them. We've got to take some responsibility in this, too. Mm -hmm. And ladies, uh, that makes me go back to your resolve when you were in the store. Yes. Dance like distress. you were... To the point that a, that a stranger that didn't even know you was willing to, first of all, go get the thing that you needed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then secondly, to ask you if you needed help and then to make the, the changes that you needed with the truck that you had so that you wouldn't have the same problem. He was willing to do all of that. So what is it about your resolve that opened I guess made yourself a little bit open so that that person could come in and help you because maybe it is the key. Maybe it is like, mm, you know what I mean? If you got a, if you got a negative resolve and you got a, Oh, I got this or I don't need nobody's help. You mm -hmm. know, that kind of thing with a person have offered the help. Probably not. And mm -hmm. I wasn't in there. Like I'm a dramatic person, but I was not in there being yeah. overly dramatic. Mm -hmm. I walked in and I was like, can you help me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I had had it. I was spent. I was just mm -hmm. like, can you, can you help me? And the guy wanted to act like he didn't know. Wow. And there was somebody in there that was like, can you look? Those yeah. were his exact words. When we got outside, he was like, the man works here. The least he could have done was look. Was look. Yeah. Um, so... When he handed it to me, I was appreciative. I didn't care if it didn't work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was going to buy it because at that point, this was still better than what Which my first option was. Mm -hmm. So I think to my resolve, it was just being vulnerable, mm -hmm. and which is apparently scary for us, but it doesn't have to be this big thing. It's just admitting that you You're gonna need, need help. help. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or in, in the 30 plus in single case, you need a counterpart. Yes. You need a mate. You need a helpmate. You need somebody to do life with. Mm -hmm. And until you actually want that, because I actually wanted help in that situation. Yeah. I was not. I know it all. I got it all by myself. And I refuse to do that. Um, until we admit that, I don't feel like we're going to be open to receive anything good. I got you on that. So basically what you're saying is that and I want to ask y'all women this. How can you be vulnerable but protect yourself from the wolves and sheep clothes? Or you, or you can't. You just got to either put yourself out there or or get bit, either one. Because you, you just never know who is who. Yeah. I mean, you mm -hmm. just, you literally have to put yourself out there. You do. Okay. And it see what scary. happens. It is scary to be vulnerable. You know, it's it's hard. The hard choice is to be vulnerable mm -hmm. because you're um, living in the space where you just, I'm, I'm going to confess my truth at this moment. You could use it against me. Mm -hmm. um, you could say anything about me in this moment or make fun of me in this moment. Mm -hmm. But I'm still going to choose to live in my truth. And this is my truth at this moment. So it's, I think it's harder work to, uh, to practice vulnerability. I agree. Mm -hmm. Somebody said something to me that really changed my outlook. Good people don't stop being good people. That's true. Mm -hmm. So... In a moment where I'm interacting with somebody, I don't have to be nasty to shut him down. If I'm not feeling him, I don't have to say, Ugh, you get on my nerves. 
Yeah. Like I don't I don't have to overly reject this man. Mm-hmm. I can just say, Well, you know what? It's been nice talking to you and I can walk off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This yeah. for me and whatever. don't mess it up for the next one, right? You know what I mean? Because somebody, that man is 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 for somebody, mm-hmm. and if the more you tear him down, the more the next person is gonna catch it. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's okay if you don't want the man, but just don't be nasty about it, right? And be smart, you know, like check their hands. Mm-hmm. I have friends that are like, I didn't know he was married. Girl, he had a ring on the whole conversation. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> She's like, I didn't even see it. Mm-hmm. Did you look? Well, mm-hmm. not really. He didn't say anything about it. Okay, well, uh, you know, we, we've got to do our due diligence yeah. in conversation. When mm-hmm. you're having conversation with people, I'm not saying interrogate the man, but ask questions that are going to spark an answer that will yes. get to the answer you need. If I need to know he's married, I may not come out and say, well, are you married? I might say, so, how are the kids this year at school? Because mm-hmm. I don't know if you have kids. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. It's summertime. Are you enjoying your uh, summer break? Are you mm-hmm. enjoying not having to take the kids to school? He might be like, I don't have kids. Great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I didn't come out and say, so, how many baby mamas do you have? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I see people do that. That's insane to me. That's not what you would do in normal conversation. Mm-hmm. If I had just met you and and I was not interested in you at all, and I'm just mm-hmm. trying to get to know you, um, that I wouldn't just say, "Well, how many kids do you?" I have? got you on that. Yeah, I, I definitely got you on that. So, and I know that when you get deep into your podcast, the upcoming podcast, um, which is going to be thirty plus and single with Cole, um, you're going to get you go dig deep into these questions yeah. and, and ask people about that. So. Hey, I'm telling you, I'm excited. I'm looking forward to this new podcast. Uh, I'm sure you go, you excited. You know what I mean? Uh, so, just do you, do you got that release date yet? Two weeks, one week, ten days? July first, July third <laughs> next year? What are we talking about? No, I'm thinking like two weeks. Two okay. weeks. Yeah, for sure. Two weeks. I can see that. I can see that. It's it's gonna be exciting, and I think. Uh, yeah, yeah, you you gonna have some interviews or it's just gonna be a solo first show. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna do some digging. I'm hoping to mm-hmm. be able to at least get some some stories and maybe some feedback from some people that are in the same boat and, and kind of figure out what they would like to hear. Yeah at first. Yeah, yeah and, and just see maybe I can incorporate some people and if not then it'll just be me and, mm-hmm. and we'll talk, we'll chat. Talk life, all all things. So shoot, the way this, the way this, the way you sounding, and the way this show sound like you gonna be, you, it, it might not be thirty plus and single with Cole too long. It might be thirty plus and just with Cole. <laughs> <laughs> thirty thirty plus and married with, with Cole. Cole. Hey, <laughs> hey, you know Let me I mean? tell y'all what I did. Yeah, <laughs> and, and now now you got a book in that thing coming. Like, and all other that. women gonna wanna want to see hallelujah <laughs> yeah. claim that yeah, exactly exactly so i tell you what it's been real we we thankful uh we had a great show today like i say guys look for 30 plus um in single with cole coming out and uh, go follow her we're we gonna drop the social media links we're gonna drop the podcast links and there's anything else you want to say to the upcoming fans cole come hang out with me let's chat let's talk about life Let's let's do the single thing until we don't have to anymore. Hey, that'll work. How about you, Felicia, from uh, one half of Can We Talk? It's been a while. <laughs> it's been a while. Well, from one half of Can We Talk, uh, we are trying to figure out how to relaunch again. Mm-hmm. So, uh, inspired by 30 Plus and Single with Cole, uh, I kind of like... got a little bit of the fever going on. Mm-hmm. So, uh, we're going to figure out how to bring this back. Uh, on on the same platform, we'll yeah. see. We might rename. We might relaunch. We'll just see how that goes. But look for that coming Ooh. soon. Hey, I like that. I like that. And to all my fans out there, this is April. And uh, until next time, people, peace and shalom. Have a good one.